Hello, welcome. Glad you're with me this evening. If you will, just uh, click the share button and invite others to join. We're going to be talking about the things that are coming upon the earth and really what that's about is current events and Bible prophecy. Uh, we're going to look at the word and some things that it says and then we're going to talk about some current events, what's actually happening uh, in the world today. And my goodness, things are just, um, they're at full speed. And things have happened this week and last week that all play into uh, biblical prophecy or potentially play into biblical prophecy. And I just want to, uh, I want us to take a few minutes and, and look at that. I, I'm, I'm recording this, I'm uh, recording it previous uh, before the seven o'clock airtime, um, but I don't know exactly how long it'll take. I, I'm, I'm going to try to make it short. If you can't watch it all right now, please come back and finish watching it because there are some amazing things going on in the world that we need to we need to be aware of. Uh, let me go ahead and let you get your Bible, if you will, and join me. I'm gonna be reading from Luke chapter 21, and, uh, and we're gonna read verse 25 through 36. That's where we're gonna start anyway. And I'm gonna read uh, initially from the, the New King James Version. I also have the New American Standard in front of me. Uh, but I want to talk about these scriptures and then we'll, um, we'll move on into actually what's happening that is somewhat of a fulfillment of scripture. If you hear a hum every now and then, I don't know if you just heard that kick on or not, it's my heater, it's a little cool in here. Um, it's warmer outside than it is in this, uh, in this office. But anyway, um, Luke chapter 21, verse 25, uh, all the way through 26 uh, there's some parallels with this. Uh, Luke uh, uh, and, and Matthew chapter 24 have some parallels, and there's some others too, but I want to read from Luke. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I'm going to read with, uh, going to read starting from verse 25, and, and it says, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the roaring waves, men's hearts failing them from fear, from the expectation of those things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. That's where we're taking our text. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Notice those things which are coming upon the earth. That's our title tonight. And we're going to talk about some of the things that are coming on the earth even now that, that relate to biblical prophecy. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, notice that when these things begin to happen, they began a long time ago. But when these things begin to happen, lift up your head, look up, lift up your head because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them the parable, uh, a, a parable, look at the fig tree and all of the trees. When they are already budding, you see and you know for yourselves that sum, summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. I want to point out here, he said, assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. He's speaking here of, uh, I believe, the generation of the fig tree. Um, and most scholars would, would, uh, would agree that the fig tree would, would relate to Israel becoming a nation. There's some, there, there, there's, uh, there's a lot of things actually to see here. We'll come back to that in just a minute. But um, the word that stands out first to me as we, as we read this, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. If you're reading from the, uh, the New King James, it says, it says there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. If you read um, the King James Version, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. So the first word that really jumps out to me as we study this is signs. I'm keeping an eye on my time trying to. Um, but there will be signs, signs. What are signs? Um, if you're going down the highway 
and you see a sign that says uh, Knoxville, 30 miles, uh, you know that 30 miles down the road, there's going to be some Knoxville exits. Um, that's, that's similar to what, to what we see coming on the earth. These are signs that we, are, we have entered the last days. And just so you know that we are definitely in the last days, Joel chapter 2 uh, told us that in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Then in Acts chapter 2, we see that uh, Peter said, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And he goes on to the same thing there. So we see that the last days actually began at the day of Pentecost, a little over 2,000 years ago. Um, but what we, what we have to realize is that, that the last day is a season, and it's not the last day. Uh, there is a last day, but the last day and the last days are, um, are, are different. The very last day, uh, the Bible talks about it. I'm not really going into that today. But the last days are this season that we live in. And here are some signs of the season. Um, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. Um, there's, a, there's a comet that is visible uh, right now. It's got a green glow to it. They say that it will probably never be seen again on earth. Uh, and it has not been seen, according to scientists, for about 50,000 years. Is that a sign? I don't know. But uh, we, we do see some things that are taking place on the earth that are definitely signs. Uh, the Bible says men's, men will be fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the earth or upon the world and the powers of heaven will be shaken. So we see that signs stand out in this passage, and, and I want to share some of those signs with you today. Um, verse 26 said, men's heart will fail them. It doesn't say, it doesn't say that, uh, that they'll just get, get nervous about what's going on. It said men's hearts will actually fail them. I believe that there will be such a stress upon people that, that there will be heart attacks, there will be uh, people's hearts will, uh, will give out because of fear. And, and these things are coming. But I want you to understand, um, I'm not bringing you a message today to fear. That's not what this is about. We should not be fearful because um, God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us power and love and a sound mind. And, and we should not be, uh, we should not be fear, fearful with what's coming upon the world because we are not the sons of disobedience. Um, that's who the wrath of God is poured out on, the sons of disobedience. The Bible makes that plain. So my point for bringing you this study today is not to cause you to fear, but to help you not to fear, actually. Um, but we need to be aware of the day that we're in. Um, we are seemingly more afraid of the unknown or the unexpected than we are once we understand what's going on around us. So that's kind of what we're doing here is we're getting a, a, an, an understanding of what's happening because I don't, I don't believe we need to be afraid as Christians. We, we need to be ready and we need to help get others ready. That's a part of what this is about too. Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world and then shall the end come, that last day. Then shall the end come. And we have a job to do. And if we don't see the urgency because of the signs that are going on around us, we will go through life and we will allow our, our friends, loved ones, neighbors, enemies, whoever, uh, to, to go headlong into hell because uh, we're not telling them urgently about the coming of Christ. Jesus is coming soon. If you don't hear anything else, hear this. Jesus is coming soon. The Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour, but we can know the seasons. Jesus made that clear. These signs show that we're in the season of his coming. So I believe that he told us that uh, we would see all these things take place. And, and as we have uh, begun to look and see what the scripture is telling us is taking place, um, we, we should not be afraid, but we should be about the Father's business and keeping our eyes upon the eastern sky because the word tells us that uh, our redemption draws nigh. Um, so there are a lot of things that are happening today that are the fulfillment of prophecy. I mean, 
you would not believe how many things are going on. And uh, I, I, I believe that so many times people say, well, um, you know, I've been hearing this all my life. Well, that itself is a fulfillment of prophecy because the Bible tells us that in the last days, there will be scoffers and mockers that would say, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things have remained the same. And, you know, we, we see people today that are, that are, are scoffing and they're saying it's not, um, it's not, there's not anything different happening today. It's always been this way. Heard somebody say that earlier today, as a matter of fact, but things are changing and Jesus is coming and uh, the word of God is true. I remember as a boy um, that there were, there were some prophecies that I just could not see as being uh, possible. And I'll get, we're gonna get there in just a minute to these, these studies uh, uh, of what is coming. But I wanna, I wanna show you that there is, that times are changing quickly. Jesus is coming soon. Um, Revelation chapter 11, verse nine and 10 is one of those, is one of those scriptures that it tells us that the, the nations, all, all different people groups will look and they will see the, the two witnesses that will, be, uh, that will be struck down dead in the streets of Jerusalem and they'll all look upon them with their eyes and, and they'll behold what's happening in, in Jerusalem. When I was a boy, that was not possible for you to see what was going on live in Jerusalem. Um, and you know, as well as I do, that became possible with, uh, with the, the advancement of, of technology and, and really the, the, the appearance of CNN and, uh, and now Fox News and so many others that are broadcasting live around the, around the globe all the time. And as a matter of fact, a matter of fact, you can pick up your cell phone at any time and see what's happening on video cameras all over the world simultaneously. And so this is easy now uh, to see how this could take place. But when I was a boy, it was not even a possibility. And it looked like the word was saying something that couldn't even take place. I wondered as a boy, are they gonna see a vision of it in the sky? Um, what's, what's the deal? How, how's everybody gonna look at this? It's clear now. And the, the, the things that are happening today are fulfillments of scripture that we couldn't understand just a few years ago. 10 years ago, even five years ago, some of these things were not in place and they are now. And you need to be aware of it. You don't need to be afraid. You need to be ready. And um, don't be of those who, who their hearts fail them for fear. Know Jesus Christ and know peace, amen? So uh, scripture tells us here that even the powers of heaven will be shaken. I'm gonna start right here for, uh, for, for one of those things. Um, I thought about this and I thought, what can I share about the powers of heaven being shaken? And um, I had recently, I'd recently read or, or watched something and it, it shared uh, about the, the North Pole. And I don't know if you know this or not, but the North Pole uh, is not staying put. Um, the North Pole is moving. Every year it's moving. Um, NASA says that the position of the Earth's geomagnetic north was first precisely located in 1831. Since then, it's gradually drifted north northwest by more than 600 miles. Its forward speed has increased from 10 miles per year to now 35 miles per year. And so if that doesn't qualify as the heavens and the earth going through shaking. The Bible tells us that everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but it also tells us that the kingdom of God um, is, not, is not shaken. And so we need to understand the world is, the world is reeling, the world is, is, uh, is moving, and, and they don't understand it. Why is the pole shifting? Why is the pole moving? I don't know, but it's 600 miles from where it was in 1831. Um, that's, that's pretty substantial. And I don't know why it is moved and I don't know how long that will continue and what will be, uh, the repercussions of that. But the consequences of Revelation 16, eight, that tells us that the fourth angel poured out, uh, his bowl on the sun and power was given to the sun to scorch men with fire that could come about by the, the moving of the North Pole because it, we, we, we move into a different position 
in relation to the sun. Just want to point that out. It's not for us to worry about, uh, but but the the heavens are 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 uh, being shaken, and they are they are um, manifesting the will of God, and and we're going to see even more of that, and and uh, probably a lot of signs in the heavens before this is all over with. Um, if we, if we look at the scripture that we began with and uh, look what it says in verse 28, it says, when these things begin to take place, the new um, American standard, say, standard says, straighten up. <laughs> so if you're not where you need to be with the Lord, you need to get ready. That's of vital importance. You have to get ready. Straighten up. Lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. We're about to be redeemed from this world. We have been redeemed by the blood of Christ into the family of God, but we're about to be uh, taken out of what will become and, and manifest the wrath of God that's to come. And this is, this is good news. This is not something to be afraid about. Jesus' Jesus's coming is not something to be afraid about. It's not something to fear. If you're right standing with him, it's something to be very excited about. I'm 16 minutes into this video, and I am moving at as fast a speed as I know how to. Um, verse 29 said, this generation, and I said I'd come back to it, that sees this happen basically is what it's saying. This generation shall not pass away until all things uh, are fulfilled. What generation is it talking about? It's talking about the generation of the fig tree. And we, we understand that really the generation of the fig tree began with uh, the nation of Israel um, be Israel becoming a nation again. And I believe that's when that took place. And we see that I'm having a little bit of trouble with my notes here, but we see that if I'm not mistaken, that took place in 1948. Um, the disciples thought that he was speaking of their generation. This generation shall not pass away until all things be fulfilled. But they missed the cue. They missed where Jesus said, consider the fig tree. Israel has always been, um, it has been uh, connected with the fig tree. And I believe that this is saying, and many scholars believe that this is saying, that when the fig tree puts forth buds, when, when Israel becomes fruitful again, and it has, uh, when it becomes a nation and becomes fruitful again, then uh, this generation that sees that will not pass away until all things be fulfilled. If you were alive, and, and many who are still alive that were born 1948 or before, then you are in the generation that will see the coming of Jesus Christ. I, I can say that with certainty. I believe that. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Uh, I believe that that's exactly what this scripture means. And if you begin to do the study, you'll see, you'll see it for yourself. Um, so again, this is, it's time for us to truly get ready for the, for the coming of Jesus. If you don't know him, know him, get ready, know him intimately for yourself. Um, let's, uh, let's see what else I need to share. Um, I believe we're much further along than we, uh, than we even realize, uh, in, in the, in, in prophecy. Um, we, we're, 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 we're far more into the last days, let me say it that way, than, than what we even believe. And so let me say again, my reason for bringing this study is not to bring fear. My reason to bring this study is that we, that we are not taken unaware that with the, the knowledge of what's coming, that we will not fear it, that we will be ready, that we'll have our hearts right with the Lord Jesus Christ, that we'll get others ready because Jesus is coming soon. And we need to know that the days are urgent because he is coming and these things are about to take place. This generation will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. So what are some of the things that are happening? I'm gonna get right on into that. Um, we need, I, want you to, I want you to keep your eyes on some of these things this year, next year, the, the coming years, as long as the Lord tarries, keep your eyes on some of these things. Uh, I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with the increase of evil. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one through five, and then verse thirteen and fourteen. King James or New King James says, "But know this: in the last days, perilous." 
times, dangerous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty or proud, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away. Verse 13 says, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you, Christian, you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you've learned them. Don't just take everything that you have heard, but know the truth that you have learned and know where it came from. It has to come from the word of God. It has to come through reputable people who hold to the word of God. Now, if you watch any TV, if you have a computer, if you have a cell phone and you see, or at least a smartphone, and you see what's going on in the world, you can see that uh, evil has greatly increased in recent years. If you're older than um, 20 years old, you have seen uh, a drastic increase of evil in your lifetime. I am 57 years old, and I have seen the world take a uh, a nosedive, and uh, it's getting worse and worse. And I'm sure that you've heard about, and don't even have to mention it, because you probably have already thought of it, but the unholy Grammy Awards that were just on, um, ungodly, and, and, and it's been called correctly unholy, and that's exactly what it is. And now Christians are getting repercussions from even speaking out against it. Who cares? Who cares about what the world thinks? We have to stay strong and focus on the truth of God's word, and it tells us that evil will increase. It has. Okay, next thing I wanna point out is, is earthquakes. The Bible talks about uh, earthquakes in diverse places. Let me just read that to you from Luke 21, same chapter we started in, but it's in verse 11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Um, we've, we've known that earthquakes would be a sign of the end times for many, many years. I heard someone say uh, last night before Bible st study that Pastor Parks, that was uh, pastor here for 30 some years at South Knoxville Church of God, used to keep newspaper clippings of, of earthquakes and things that were happening around the world. I didn't know that, but uh, I, again, I had this study planned uh, from, from Sunday, told you that I would uh, share this with you tonight. And since that, we have seen an earthquake that has killed about 20,000 people. That's taken place in Turkey and Syria. It happened on Monday. Um, earthquakes, uh, it says, will be in diverse places. And it doesn't just say earthquakes, but it says, uh, if you read that scripture there, it says great earthquakes. This was a terrible one. It was 7.8 on the Richter scale. And, um, and thousands, tens of thousands of people have been killed. They're still trying to pull people out of the rubble. They hear people under the rubble and, and can't get to them. It's, it's, it's tragedy. And uh, this, this thing with, uh, with evil increasing, we've seen uh, new pop-ups of that even since, since I, I felt like I needed to share this. So I just added those two and I wanted to put them first because they are happening all around us and they're happening even now. Uh, the last one I want to mention um, that that uh, that I'm sh well. There's others too, but I'm sure that you're aware of of uh, false messiahs and and the spirit of antichrist. Um, Jesus said that even in his day, that the spirit of the antichrist had already gone out into the world. The last one I want to mention from this page um, that I'm on here. Um, there, there's a there's an article from is Israel Today that I want to read to you. But we know that Jesus is the Messiah, and Jesus said there would be false Christ, false messiahs, false prophets, false teachers, um, and and even uh, those who operate in the spirit of Antichrist. And finally, the Antichrist himself will appear on the scene. Um, I've heard someone say we're not looking for the Antichrist; we're looking for Jesus Christ. And I agree with that. But we have to realize that he is coming and, and all of these, these little pop-ups of, of false Christs and, 
and the spirit of Antichrist that's operating in the world. These are just signs of the coming of Jesus. Uh, the article in Israel Today says uh, it was in September uh, of 2022, and it said Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with the Messiah. And um, it, it tells in that article, it says, a snapshot of Israel's spiritual hunger as biggest rabbis are afraid to leave the country lest they miss the Messiah's coming. This was last year. They are so expectant of the coming of the Messiah because they're seeing the signs of, of the times as well that, that they are even afraid to leave the country. They're afraid, they're afraid they'll miss the Messiah's coming. And one, Messiah, one rabbi says that he is already holding meetings with the Messiah. He didn't say who it was, didn't reveal that, but he says he's holding meetings with the Messiah. There, um, there have been um, signs popping up in New York City. Uh, they began in, in uh, June of um, 2022, and they have said the Messiah is here. And um, they actually don't reveal who this Messiah is, but they are saying the Messiah is here. Um, Messiah has been here and he is coming back here, but he is, he is not here right now. But um, I, I, want, I want you to realize that we are in a day when there are a lot of false Christs, a lot of false messiahs. I'm having trouble getting to my notes. I think I'm gonna have to page into a different program. Give me just a minute and I'll get where I need to go. Uh, it's not as big. The print is a little smaller. I might have to pull my computer a little closer, but I, want to, I don't wanna miss anything that, we're, that we need to talk about. But um, when we're talking about false messiahs, let me, give you, um, let me give you a person that people are pointing out that could possibly be um, the false messiah or at the least the false prophet. Um, I don't know, and I'm not, I'm not pointing my finger at him and saying that he is, but he is gaining a lot of attention, and he has media swarming around him. He has, he has uh, uh, rabbis and scholars of Israel swarming around him. He is a, he is a young rabbi himself. Uh, as he was a child, they called him the Yanuka, which means that, um, that he was a prodigy. Uh, he's a genius, and he had the Torah memorized. It can quote the whole Torah from what I understand by heart. That's the first five books of the Bible. Uh, he's been able to do so since he was a child. Uh, like I said, rabbis are flocking to him. He, there are crowds flocking to him. Um, they are saying that he is performing mi miracles. They call him the Yanuka. His name is uh, Shlomo Yehuda Biri. Uh, they call him Rabbi Shlomo, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi uh, Biri, all these things. But he's Rabbi Shlomo Yehuda Biri. And they say, again, he's, he's, he's performing miracles. The interesting thing, and I've watched some of, these, uh, some of these reports, that when they say he performs miracles, they don't say anything about thanking God. They thank him. And, uh, and that's interesting. They, uh, they, he doesn't, he doesn't correct them on that. And I, that makes me a little leery. Um, so at this point, uh, he's not being touted as the Messiah by the Jewish people, but the, he is causing a stir everywhere that he goes. People want his blessing. People want, uh, want him to, uh, to touch them. People want to hear what he has to say. And thousands are flocking to hear him. You might want to keep an eye on, uh, the Yanuka. And if you want to know how to spell that, it's Y-A-N-U-K-A. -A. Um, I, I personally th sound, feel like he sounds more like the false prophet than the Antichrist, but uh, I don't know. And I don't, I'm not saying he's either. Um, another thing to be looking at is this digital dollar um, that uh, Joe Biden has, uh, has been trying to push. Um, if you've not heard of it, you're behind the times, and I hadn't heard of it. I was behind the times. Uh, there was an article in Newsweek uh, in uh, March of 20, 2022, and it says Biden's plans for digital dollar, a massive threat to freedom. Um, I can share links for these things in the, uh, not immediately, but in the days to come, I'll try to share links uh, in, in the comment section so you can go and look at some of these things. Um, 
But on March of 2022, Biden administration issued a, uh, an executive order directing a laundry list of governmental agencies to develop plans to regulate cryptocurrencies like Bitcoins, as well as, this is what you need to hear right here, as well as to produce a detailed plan to study the potential creation of a central bank digital currency, CB. DC, Central Bank Digital Currency for the United States. So a digital dollar um, would, would, be, it would not be a physical dollar that you would have in your pocket. Um, a digital dollar would be, uh, it would be uh, perhaps paid for, uh, you could pay for things with your phone as you can already do, but you have to have a physical dollar in the bank to back it up. The digital dollar would do away with the need for physical um, currency. Um, the digital dollar, the best I understand it, the digital dollar also could easily be tracked by banks and federal agencies. Every single dollar spent, every cent, so to speak, spent could be tracked easily uh, by the federal government. They know what you could buy. They could even lock things up where you couldn't pay, um, you couldn't buy because it's digital. You wouldn't have the currency to exchange. Um, they could uh, pre-program what was available with your dollar or who was, av who, who was able to buy with the dollar. We know that that sounds like uh, the currency of the, the regime of the Antichrist. And so uh, the article said, in short, that the development of a digital currency could present the most dramatic expansion of federal power in history, depending on its design. So we see in Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, uh, actually 16 and 17, it says he causes, uh, speaking of the false prophet actually here, I, I believe, he causes both small and great, rich and poor, free and, uh, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or in their forehead so that no one may buy or sell except the one who has the mark uh, of, of the name of the beast and the number of his name. So yes, best I remember that is, that is the, the second beast that's pointing to the first beast, the second beast being the, the Antichrist. First beast um, is the, uh, I'm sorry, second beast being the false prophet, first beast being the Antichrist. You can see that all in Revelation 13. Check me on that. But um, this is, the, this is the, um, the false prophet that causes people to worship uh, the Antichrist and, and not to be able to buy or sell. Um, so tracking, that is, uh, happening already uh, is already far beyond what you understand, but they're trying to put greater uh, greater tracking in place for even the, Amer the American people. Uh, I won't spend long on this, but China already has uh, a lot of tracking in place, and they are actually there's a there's a, a section of China where there's a Muslim population, and and they are being they're being persecuted by the Chinese government. I'm sure Christians are too. This is a large section where Muslims are, uh, they are being, they're being detained. They're, they're looking at their phones, they're seeing where they've been, they're watching their, uh, they, every, every um, 100 meters, they say, uh, they're, they're stopping them, looking at their phones again, seeing where they've been. They've got QR codes on their homes telling who lives there, how many people are in the house, they're not allowed to. Uh, they're not allowed to stray from any of those things. And if they if they are in um, in in rebellion against the, what they have been told, they are taken into custody and they are uh, they are reeducated on how they are allowed to live as Chinese citizens. And uh, that is not going to stay in China. I don't believe it'll stay in China. I'm I'm watching my time. I'm going on wars and rumors of wars. Um, you know about all these things. This happened last week and uh, week before some of these things that I want to share. But last February, uh, last week, um, we we know that there just a few days ago that um, it's probably two weeks now almost. Russia uh, said that it was amassing another two hundred thousand soldiers to to make a new assault on Ukraine, and uh, and and NATO had warned about it, and and uh, then. Uh, a lot of countries just shortly after that, uh, including the United States and a lot of Western countries, uh, agreed to deliver 300 tanks to the Ukraine to help them. 
31 of them were, were coming from the United States, M1 Abram tanks. And, um, and Putin, of course, is, is, is fuming. He is uh, he's speaking out against the, uh, the Western aid. And he said, Russia has an answer to any country that threatens it. Um, and then also a member of the North Korea State of Affairs Commission spoke out uh, saying the U.S. was crossing a red line by sending tanks into the Ukraine. So we're seeing wars and rumors of wars, just as the Word of God tells us. Um, we we uh, we know that um, this invasion of the Ukraine happened about a year ago. You know what? There's always somebody invading somebody in the United States. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in the world, the United States is always involved in it. We're always um, we're always trying to come to the aid. Uh, of somebody, and I'm not opposed to coming to the aid of people, but if there's a if there's a major uh, war in the world, we're probably going to be involved in it. So you should know that. But be ready, be be close with Jesus. Um, this past week, we saw uh, the Chinese um, spy balloon. I'm going to go ahead and call it that. That's what it's being called. Uh, at first, they didn't really know if it was a spy balloon or just a uh, a weather balloon of some sort doing a, a climate uh, study as as the Chinese said that it was, but this was a surveillance balloon because um, even though they said it was a civilian airship that was doing meteorotic, meteorology, I can't even say it, meteorological, <laughs> meteor, I can't say it. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh with me, laugh at me for just a minute. Meteorological research, um, they they retrieved the balloon and the technology. Uh, there was technology that was listening to communications uh, wh wherever this balloon had gone. I don't know if you know it or not, but it came right over. From what they say, it came right over Oak Ridge and uh, you know Tennessee here, and uh, it also went over a lot of other military uh, sites. And and this is an intrusion of of the privacy of America by a uh, a very powerful other nation, and and uh, we're we're at the edge of 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 potential conflict on so many levels, and we don't even necessarily see it. You don't hear all that sometimes in the news, but it's we're we're on the we're we're on the edge of of World War Three nearly all the time. Is it going to happen right now? I don't know, uh, but there's always the danger. And the Bible said that there would be wars and rumors of wars. I'm almost thirty seven minutes into this study, so I have to go on. I can't stay too long on any of these. Um, do you know the Euphrates River is drying up? Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 says, the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, um, the, Euphrates, the, the Euphrates River is drying up now. It's not just the Euphrates River many rivers and lakes worldwide are are drying up. And um, the trend, trend seems to indicate uh, the potential for drought and famine, which also is prophesied in the word of God. Um, northeastern Syria, the Euphrates water levels is down so low that in 2021, 5 million people were being at risk of, of being left without drinking water. Same thing is happening in cities in the United States, in the West where Lake Mead is drying up and others, uh, they're, they're being left without drinking water. There are lawsuits going on trying to force uh, the, the, the local government to send water through the pipelines that water is not coming through to, to, to smaller towns. And uh, these things are happening. Um, is this the, the angel pouring out uh, this, this sixth angel, pouring out his vial upon the great river Euphrates? Probably not yet, but we're heading toward that very clearly. Um, the Euphrates is, is mentioned uh, more than just once uh, in the word of God as being a significant uh, river in biblical prophecy. There's also, if I'm not mistaken, and I didn't look this up, but four angels that are that are bound in the great river Euphrates. Why they are bound there, I don't know, but when they are released, um, uh, I think it's about a third of the population will die. Um, God, is, God is guarding his word. He's making his word come to pass. We might not see the Euphrates River dry up completely, but watch some of the videos 
I can even share a couple of those maybe here also in the comments uh, that will show you that uh, it's amazing how much water loss they've lost. It's unbelievable. They've lost, um, nobody even knows how many gallons, but feet and feet of, of depth. Um, and and it, it's just getting, it's just getting really uh, disastrous in certain parts of the world. So, uh, we have the potential for that river to dry up soon, but will it? We don't know. We don't know when God will will uh, complete that. Um, I'm going to get to the last one that I'm going to share with you today, and I'm going to spend a few more minutes here. This one sounds like science fiction. It's not. I want to say that right up front. Um, I know we don't even know uh, a, a lot about this. Most of us don't, and I didn't either, but I still don't know much, but I, I know a little. Um, but we're talking about artificial intelligence. Um, AI is becoming a very advanced uh, thing in our society today. And there is a plan, again, this sounds like science fiction, it's not. There is a plan to integrate artificial intelligence with homo sapiens, with humans, to make us superhuman and finally remove the, 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 the threat of imminent death. Uh, at least for those who can afford it. Uh, the plan is to destroy death, to give humans the ability to live indefinitely, to, um, uh, to, to overcome death completely. Is that possible? Well, I believe it would be possible if God didn't stop it because uh, God made it clear, even at the Tower of Babel, that if they were united, there would be nothing that would that they couldn't accomplish, but he 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 came down and and uh, and confounded their languages, and I believe God will stop this, but uh, it may go far enough that it becomes a threat to humanity. Um, they're already making absolutely amazing strides forward, and they plan to have death conquered. You won't believe this by the year twenty thirty. That one of the goals is to do away with death to those who can afford the technology before the end of 2020s. And um, again, I don't believe God will allow that, but there are some things that are happening that are connected with this that also will play into, I believe with all my heart, will play into end time biblical prophecy. Um, there's a man named Yuval Noah Harari. Um, he is uh, he's perhaps... Uh, demon possessed, <laughs> I don't know, but he is anti God. He's anti. He's anti Christ in spirit. Um, he said history begins. Uh, by the way, he's Israeli, and he is an atheist. He said history began when humans invented gods, little g, and it will end when humans become gods. He's one of the main uh, proponents of something that's called the Gilgamesh Project, which I kind of spelled out there for you. He says, now humankind is poised to replace natural selection. Of course, they're talking from a humanistic standpoint, but uh, replace human um, natural selection with intelligent design. I heard him say this. It doesn't say this in this quote. It goes on to say, and to extend life from organic realm into the inorganic. So he's talking about us moving into uh, and combining with and merging with AI. But I heard him say this and he said, uh, now humankind is poised to replace natural selection with intelligent design, not the de intelligent design that we have heard of being a God somewhere, but the intelligent design by mankind and we will become the gods. I heard him say that on, on a video. Again, I can share some of these links. I hope to do that. Um, uh, but anyway, I, I won't be able to do it all the night. Uh, but the Gilgamesh Project, which I mentioned, is a project, it's a movement uh, to use artificial intelligence to enhance humans and finally defeat death and to give humans better lives. Here's a quote from the WISE movement, which, um, which was reporting on the Gilgamesh Project. It said, today the leading uh, project of the scientific revolution is to give humankind eternal life at least for people that can afford it. For men of science, death is not an in, inevitable destiny, but merely a technical problem. People die not because God's decreed it, 
but due to various technical failures, heart attack, cancer, infection, and every technical, um, every technical problem has a technical solution. Today, we are developing new medicines, revolutionary treatments, artificial organs, and uh, they even mention, it doesn't say it here, but they even mention um, uh, nanotechnology, uh, and, and, which is miniature, robot, miniature robots that will go in and prepare, uh, repair uh, organs and different things that will lengthen our lives and might one day vanquish the Grim Reaper himself. Well, the Bible tells us that death will be the last uh, enemy uh, to be conquered and that death and hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. It doesn't say that man will, will beat death and we will not because death is the punishment for sin. And these men that are, that are uh, walking in such pride and arrogance are operating in, 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 uh, in sin, clearly. Um, but one mathematician and Christian apologist, uh, John Lennox, and, and I, I, I really love some of the things he has said. He said, they've come too late. He, he has told some of them this. He said, you've come too late. He said, death was defeated 20 centuries ago. That just thrilled me when I heard him say that. Jesus has already defeated death. Um, death will continue on this earth until it's cast into the lake of fire, but Jesus has already defeated it. And because he's defeated it, we can live forever. Eternal life is already available through Jesus Christ. Again, if you don't know him, you better get to know him. We're at the very end of days. It's, it's coming soon. And I, I don't mean to scare you. I'm not trying to scare you. I want you, to, I want you to be in Christ where there's no reason to fear. Get to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, I'd be glad to lead you to him. Uh, let me go on. Back to Noah Harari. Uh, the Berkeley Institute said of him, with emerging technologies that promise to overcome fundamental human limitations, Yuval Noah Harari, an Israeli historian, believes that we are among the final generations of homo sapiens on earth. This regenesis, which is what he's calling it, I think, would be a time of superhuman gods where Christianity, Islam, communism, capitalism, male and female can be relics from a primitive past. Um, he is exalting himself and mankind to the place of, of being gods and saying that we will become that. We are not going to become that. We, uh, we, we will not ever become gods, but we are sons of God uh, through Jesus Christ. And there's nothing man can do to, to overthrow that. You, again, you might say this is science fiction. Um, and it is today for them to do this. It's still science fiction, but science fiction becomes science fact on a daily basis. You, you probably haven't lived long enough to see um, the, the, the difference between uh, flying, for instance, uh, being a science fiction um, not reality, a science fiction theory uh, to science fiction uh, fading into science fact. And, but now we fly around the world at, at supersonic speeds. And um, it's, it's amazing that, again, science fiction uh, becomes science fact every day. So many things, so many things, and I can't go all, all into those, but it's amazing. Um, and you might also say, again, this is just science fiction. It won't work. It can't happen. Some of these things can't happen. And I agree that some of these things can't and will not ever happen, but some of them will. Um, and, and we've tried it before. Um, if you, if you want to consider this, Satan said, I will ascend above the clouds. I will be like the most high God. God cast him down to earth. We've tried it before. Satan's tried it before. Man's tried it before. And every single time God has intervened, he will intervene again in this situation very clearly. But we don't know how long it'll be before he intervenes. So Satan said, I will ascend above the clouds and be like the most high. So God cast him down to earth. Adam and Eve wanted to be like gods, knowing good from evil and were banished from paradise so that they couldn't eat from the tree of life and live forever in their sinful state. God's not going to allow us to do that now either. Um, the sons of God in Genesis chapter six 
The sons of God mated with the daughters of man and corrupted the human gene pool. As we see in giants were born, evil became rampant. God destroyed uh, the, the earth with a flood. And the Bible tells us that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the son of man. Man is trying to again uh, overcome God and, 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 and just um, do his own thing. And God is not gonna allow it forever. Uh, the Tower of Babel is another example. Um, probably at, uh, at the, the leadership of the Tower of Babel was Nimrod, who's mentioned in the Bible. We don't know that for sure, but probably. Uh, but, but the Tower of Babel was an attempt to reach heaven without God and perhaps even to become gods. And God said, if they were united, I mentioned this, nothing would be impossible to them. So he confounded their language and scattered them all over the world. Now I want us to realize, got a notification popping up. Uh, I want us to realize that we, we, are, we are going to see evil men and seducers, imposters, wax worse and worse. The Bible tells us that, and I told you that already. It's gonna happen, it's gonna get worse. Some of these things are going to, uh, they're going to, to, to happen. Uh, all of these things are going to happen in some way or the other, but I really believe that artificial intelligence and transhumanism will come into play in, uh, and you might not have ever even heard of transhumanism, but, but uh, the connecting of humans and technology will come into play uh, in, in the last day prophecy. And I don't think that God will allow it to go nearly as far as God has planned but it could be uh, through uh, artificial intelligence or even transhumanism that the Antichrist is brought back to life. It could be through uh, artificial intelligence or transhumanism that the, that the false prophet gets, gives life to the image of the beast as it says in Revelation 13, 15. In any case, the, the scripture is true. But the one I wanna point you to, the very thing that I wanna point you to last, uh, goes back to the scripture that, that the scriptures that we began with, with Luke chapter 21. I wanna to jump to the verse 34 though. I read this to you, but I wanna remember, I want you to remember it as we get off here. Be on guard so that your hearts will not be, this is the new American standard, read slightly different than I read earlier. Be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and worries of life, that the day will not come on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth, but keep on the alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all those things that are about to take place and stand before the Son of Man. I want to remind you too, that that's not what I even meant to read. What I meant to read that I said I read earlier was this. Verse 27, uh, 28 says, but when these things begin to take place, straighten up, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Jesus is coming soon. There's, there's a lot of things coming upon the earth and they'll cause fear and men's hearts will fail them for fear. But don't be afraid. Jesus is coming and we can withstand. If he doesn't come as quickly as we hope, we can withstand the things that are coming on the earth because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. We probably will go through some tribulation, some, uh, some, some trial, some persecution, but I believe that Jesus is coming very, very soon. And I don't believe that, I know that we won't go through the wrath of God and I look forward to his coming. But now is the day to be ready. Now is not the day to be playing games or to be, to be walking on the fence or to be, uh, to be flirting with sin. It's not the day for that. Today is the day to come out from among the world and be a separate people, says the Lord, and I will receive you. That's what his word says. Today is the day of salvation if you harden not your heart. Today is the day to know Jesus and to know him and, and to be close to him and to walk circumspectly, not as fools, wisely, not as fools. Today is the day. The things that are coming on the earth are coming rapidly and it's going horribly wrong uh, from our perspective. This is all a part of the plan of God and it will all lead to the redemption of man and 
the, the renewal of, of all of the heaven and all of the earth. The old things are passing away and the new is coming. And I am going to be a part of his new kingdom. I'm already a part and I'm gonna stay a part. God bless you. I love you. Hope this has blessed you. I've gone about 55 minutes right now, or almost. And uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, leave me a comment. Please share this and, uh, and tell somebody. Tell somebody to watch it that needs to know Jesus. Um, get ready. Jesus is coming. He might come tonight. I hope he does. I hope he comes just as soon as this is over. But be ready and stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not in your own strength, not in your own ability. He will strengthen you. He will make you victorious. I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night in the Lord.